So I'm going to put this new Pomodoro timer to use, and I'm going to limit this video to that time. Now I got asked, Dwayne, how do you see the remote-only tech work in these times? And this is a loaded question. The person is really wanting to understand how easy it will be for them to get a fully remote work role in tech. The problem is, is that they are asking the wrong question and they are coming at it from the wrong perspective. I get this answer, you know, I actually get this question a lot. Uh, I get asked, hey, Dwayne, why don't you just give us the answer? Uh, just tell me how easy it's going to be, or even better, how to get a remote tech job. Well, guess what? This is the video for you. Now, the question is, hi, Dwayne, how you see the remote only tech works in this times? That's, that was how it was written out. Uh, and so I'm assuming that the person who wrote this probably speaks multiple languages and is getting the inflections and plurality of words mixed up because they're probably coming from, my guess is uh, a language from Europe or, or over in that area outside of the uh, American continent, unless uh, it's Spanish is their main language. Uh, French that typically doesn't have this problem, uh, so I'm going to assume it's going to be Spanish or some other European language. Um, uh, I don't consider Spanish to be a European language, just to be clear, but I, I'm overgeneralizing. Uh, but what it really comes down to is your ability to get a fully remote software development role does not just depend on these times or the current market. The one thing that a lot of people will not tell you because they make money off of you watching their videos as they lead you along and give you false hope and don't tell you the right thing is that it really does depend on you. It's not about the current market as much as it is your ability to earn trust. If you are a total noob and you have no project under your belt, most people aren't even going to trust you to work on their project, much less trust you to work fully remote on their project. It's that simple. And if you are the sort of individual who actively goes out of their way to look for a fully remote role when you just got out of school, you're in for a hard time. Because there's actually some really big things around what dictates if you're able to get a fully remote role or not. First of all is, where are you physically located? Are you an American or are you based outside of America? That is the context that I have as an American. But if you're not in America, the, the overly general context that you can apply here is, are you in the country of the person that you want to work for? Or are you outside of their country? Because that changes the tax laws and how they have to treat you. For example, as an American, I am a domestic American who lives and works in Washington state. As a result, I am not an offshore individual and I am not beholden to the new tax laws that make it so that a company has to pay for the taxes on hiring me for 15 years. That's a pretty big deal. As an American, it's only five years now because of the new tax changes from the Section 174 changes. That makes it a bit cheaper than somebody who is offshore. And so as a result of that, I'm a better business value than somebody who is offshore based on the numbers. Now, if you are the sort of individual who is lacking in experience and you don't have successful projects under your belt and you haven't worked a day in your life because you just got out of school, then you're going to have trouble getting people's trust to hire you in the first place, much less hiring you for a fully remote role. A fully remote role is generally reserved for somebody who is senior only. And that is why they call it a senior only job market. Now, a lot of people don't want to hear this. They will download the video or they will you know, turn it off or whatever. But 
the people that are giving you false hope and saying that you can be a junior who doesn't know anything and hasn't done anything and just got out of a boot camp and get a fully remote role are lying to you because they can make money doing that when people are dumb enough to believe them. It's that simple. And so you should work on yourself and earn the trust to be able to get the remote role that you've earned. And when you earn it, you're going to feel a lot better about that. And now you could be asking yourself, but Dwayne, how do I earn the trust to get the remote role if I've never been in a remote role? Well, guess what? Go into an office for a few years. If you don't have prior office experience, it's invaluable and you should do it. Period. I'm at a different level than you are. Okay, I have 25 years of experience and a big chunk of that is in the office. The last few years, I've been fully remote, but I earned that by first doing 20 years in the office. Think about that. You're expecting to go into a situation and be in a better position than somebody who, with 20 years of experience is. Humble yourself. Now, I, I know times have changed and things are different now. We have new technology because of work that I worked on and work that other people like me worked on over the last 20, 25 years. We've built that world for you. Congratulations. Yes, you should be thanking us. But the fact is, that doesn't mean that you've automatically earned it because from a company's perspective, and we're going to shift into the employer mindset here, so please don't get it twisted. The company doesn't trust you. It's betting its life on you by hiring you. It's saying to itself, look, I need to survive, but to do that, I need to get this work done. And the hiring manager is saying, you know what? I want to keep my job. I need to hire more people so we can get this work done. So when you get hired, it's about trust. You earn that trust through your prior work, your prior experience, and through the successful projects that you've worked on. Which means if you're not at least senior level, they consider you to be somebody who still needs handholding, which makes it more risky to hire you. If they already assume that it's more risky to hire you, then why are they going to hire you for a position where they're not going to be able to watch you closely and actually make sure that you actually do your work? Yes, I am fully aware that technically speaking, if you're a competent software development engineer, you should be able to work anywhere in the world because all you need is a computer. But why should the company trust you if you're not going to prove to them in advance that you can actually do the work? And you think to yourself, well, that's what my resume is for. Well, how do we know that your resume is accurate? Your resume is a list of claims. It's a marketing document. It's there to get interest. By its very nature, we all know you lie. And so as a result of that, the question of, hey, Duane, where do you see the remote only tech work at these times? So I go back to the question. Is not a simple one. Because it doesn't just depend on these times. It depends on you. It depends on your physical location. It depends on how the laws work around your physical location and skill set. It is a complicated issue. And what it comes down to is if you're not based in the country that the company that wants to hire you is, you're going to have a hard time. It's more expensive and the taxes are going to be higher for the company. They're going to pay more money to hire you, which means they're going to expect more output from you or they're not going to be allowed to hire you because the taxes are too high or the regulation is too high or whatever. Okay. And if you are a software development engineer who is senior level or higher, you are going to have an easier time because you have the prior experience. I was an L7 at Amazon. I was I'm an ex-Amazon principal engineer. I have worked at Microsoft and Microsoft Research. I've worked at all these different companies. And unlike, you know, people like Tech Lead and everything else, like I, I actually don't go around telling people that usually. Uh, but I do have that experience. And so as a result of that, I've also hired. 
And I can tell you from the hiring manager's perspective, when I'm hiring for a fully remote role, I am not looking at juniors by default unless that's all I can get from HR. Especially if I have a very small team and I need to hire the second engineer or the third engineer for the team and I'm the first. I'm trying to stack it with the most senior people possible and I would like to get at least, you know, four or five senior level engineers before I start adding juniors because I know that juniors will distract from the capacity of the team. I know that a junior engineer will actively go out of their way to cause trouble in some cases because I've seen it happen and I haven't had a very good experience with junior engineers. Now, to be clear, I have actually mentored quite a few junior engineers. The problem is a lot of them don't know how incompetent they are. They assume they're better than they are, and that often leads to problems. And so they assume, well, I can do this. I know this stuff, and maybe they do. But because of their immaturity, even if it's not just their lack of technical skills, maybe they have the technical skills, but maybe they don't have the professional mindset. Maybe they don't have the adult mindset because they're not older. And so as a result of that lack of maturity and the lack of emotional maturity, that can also be a problem. That's why we have behavioral interviews in software. Because it's not just about your tech skills. It's also about your ability to be human, interact with other people, be empathetic and kind, and not be a jerk or somebody who's full of themselves. And so when I'm trying to be very data-driven on this, I try my best to fill the role with what the business needs as a priority versus what I would like to do, because what I would like to do is hire super junior engineers with no experience, train them up, keep them there for a year or two, you know, get them to intermediate level and then let them move on. But guess what? That's bad for the company. And so you can't do that or you're going to cost your money, cost your company money. Companies hate it when you do that because then you're cycling devs and that's expensive for them. And so if you're hiring for a fully remote role, not only are you worried about their ability to get the work done and stay and not take some random other job that they interviewed for on company time and didn't tell you because they're working remote, but you're actually trying to keep these people and retain them for cost of business being as low as possible. And so if you are looking for a fully remote role, you better be senior level or higher. And if you're not and you still get a remote role, you're lucky as shit. And you should stay there for as long as possible because you're not going to get it somewhere else, period. And if you do, great. You're one of the lucky ones. But this is not normal. So... A lot of people will be online and they'll make videos and they'll talk about boot camps or whatever and try to sell you hope. They'll even try to sell you products to get it so that you can somehow find that remote role. Don't listen to them. They're lying to you. They're just trying to make money off your expense. What you should really be working on is increasing the amount of trust that people can give you because you have a solid, provable history of getting stuff done. Being successful in your projects, being public about your success, and also, more importantly, public about your losses. Take the L. Accept it. Move on, but only after you learn from it. And make sure other people can learn from it as well. I do that in my videos. I'll make, I'll make mistakes. I admit it, and I move on. It's just how it is. I have 25 years of experience, but that doesn't mean I don't make mistakes. Okay? I'm still human. I'm going to make mistakes from time to time. I'm going to say the wrong word. <laughs> I'm going to remember the wrong thing. Okay? It's just how it is. It's part of being human. What matters is do you actually care enough to try to fix your mistakes before you move on? That will help you. If you want a full remote role and you actively want to be that senior level developer, maybe you're not yet. Maybe you're just a noob. Maybe you're getting out of your, your college or whatever, getting out of school. Because let's face it, boot camps are terrible. Don't go to boot camps. Go to actual school. And 
at that point, you're going to be in a better position. Keep that in mind. So, so just to, just to, to clarify and recap, it's not about the market. It's about your location. It's about your skill and the ability for the company to trust you. You earn that trust by having a proven history of getting projects done, having a proven history of being in the industry prior, having a proven history of managing teams, which means if you have not managed a team or you have not been a lead developer, you should be focusing on that first before you focus on working remote. And once you've done those things, you should still be getting your work done when you're fully remote or you're going to lose that job and you're never going to get a fully remote role again or it's going to be very hard for you to do. And if you are somebody who is, you know, offshore from the perspective of me as somebody who's in America, for example, if you're based in India or Europe or whatever, and you're trying to get a, <laughs> a job at an American company, stop. It's not happening. No. The, the taxes are way, the, the laws have changed. The taxes are higher. Stop. That's why everybody in your area is struggling. So move on, find a local company, give them the value you can. Iterate, give them the value you can, be successful in your projects, and eventually, yeah, remote work will happen. Because let's face it, every single software development job can be done remote. Whether you're in an office or you're at home in your own office, all you need is a laptop and some extra screens that will hook up to the laptop. Because let's face it, you need the extra screens to be really effective at a lot of things. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. I'm looking at this question here and I'm, I'm thinking to myself, it's not about you. And I know you want the fully remote role, but you're going to have to earn it. And that's what it comes down to because it doesn't matter what you want. What matters is what you can prove. And what matters is the companies that are hiring, if they feel safe letting you in the door and then telling you, yeah, you can work from home. Because that's what's stopping most of you from getting these jobs anyway. You don't have the projects under your belt. You don't have the GitHub publicly showing that you can write code effectively. You don't have the green boxes on your GitHub because you're not checking in enough code. So people don't think that you're technical because you can sit there and say that you're technical and that you can do it all day. But until they see actual proof, they're not going to believe you. That's what the interview's for. And you're probably not passing the interviews either, are you? Think about that.